Steven Espinoza says, Earl Spence conceded terms to Terrence Crawford he didn't need or deserve. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Cardinal Red, Cardinal Red Sports. Let's talk about it. All right, y'all. So, Steven Espinoza recently put out some information about the negotiation process between Earl Spence and Terrence Bud Crawford. I just wanted to get my two cents whether Steven is capping or is he giving full facts. Definitely, definitely my time. I feel like this is what I've been dreaming about since the amateur days when I was a kid. All right, so where we start at? Where we start at? So... Steven Espinosa basically said he feels like Earl Spence shouldn't have had to give in to some of the terms that he conceded to Terrence Crawford to make the fight. What were those terms? Why does Steven Espinosa feel that way? And should Earl Spence be worried that he conceded any of this stuff to Terrence Crawford? All right, so basically the things that Earl Spence actually conceded were, and these have already been verified, there was a million dollars that Earl Spence said he conceded to Terrence Crawford to actually make the fight. So that has to do with the purse. 100% honest, I gave him that when we was in negotiations to make the fight happen. So there were multiple places in the negotiation process and in the contract where Earl Spence actually gave up space for Terrence Crawford to accept the fight. Now, that million dollars, should he have given up that million dollars to actually make the fight with Crawford? You know what? I ain't know where I was going, but I know that God has something bigger for me. And so that's why I'm here. And uh, I want to show everybody out there that we can go up and change. Me personally, I say if it had to be done, it had to be done. If the only way Terrence Crawford was going to accept the fight was for Earl Spence to give up a million dollars out of his side of the purse to Terrence Crawford's side of the purse and he actually got the fight he wanted, well, I would say that's a small price to pay because both of these guys are going to get seriously rich off this fight anyway. Look at yourself. How many millionaires you got on, bro? I count at least three. Look around, man. I figured all this shit out, man. This whole world moves forward through transactions. The exchange of goods and services. Mm. All the real ball of successful folks are sellers. And all the broke-ass people playing catch-up are buyers. Let's just say all together, Earl Spence was going to make $30 million off this fight with the front end, the back end, any small amount of money that he got up front because we all know PBC doesn't pay big money up front to their fighter so you know maybe he got a million dollars two million dollars three million dollars up front and all together with everything he stands to make about 30 million off of this fight is there a big difference between him making 29 million and 30 million <laughs> not really because actually in what he's gonna save on taxes from not making 30 million and instead making 29 He's actually probably saving a million dollars anyway. So that million dollars he came up is going to get written off in taxes anyway. So it's not really going to matter that much whether he got 30 million or 29 million. He's going to end up with about the same amount of money, maybe a little bit more after taxes anyways. You know, I finally have my opportunity where I can put on the show and, you know, put on a great performance and, you know, be like that. And somebody have a documentary of me in the lead up to the fights. And, you know, and I got a kid 30, 40 years from now, like he's an amateur and he's watching the fight and he's a pro now. And he's like, man, I want to have a fight like Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford. So I don't think that's a big deal, you know, when it comes to the million dollars he gave up to Terrence Crawford now could have bought himself two more Bentleys or another house <laughs> or maybe two or three houses depending on the neighborhood but you know he's still going to be able to do all of that and that million dollars isn't going to affect him that much now Steven Espinosa said that there were other things and Earl Spence agreed that there were other things within the contract that he gave up to actually make the fight. Now, what were some of those other things that he gave up to make the fight? Well, we all know that originally 
they wanted the fight in Texas. And mama, don't worry, you raised a gangster. I'm a survivor. You know, you know, come out. Terrence Crawford wanted a neutral site. He knew he wasn't going to get anywhere close to where he's actually from, Nebraska. He felt like Vegas would be the perfect, you know, go between between both of those guys. You know, instead of putting it in Texas or Nebraska, let's put it in Vegas, neutral site. You know, and that way it's fair for both fighters. That is something else Earl Spence had to concede to actually get the fight made was a neutral site. And Steven Espinosa said he feels like Earl Spence shouldn't have had to give up any space within the negotiation process. What they offered the last time is what he felt like Terrence Crawford should have been willing to accept. But if it's what had to be done to make the fight, it's what had to be done to make the fight. And he was very proud of Earl Spence for giving up some of his negotiating power to actually make the fight. And me, to be honest, I think that that shows a lot of confidence on Earl Spence's behalf to even give up a million dollars, let alone have a neutral site fight where you could have had it in Texas in front of all those fans in Cowboys Stadium. That's, that's going to be a great moment. Were there any other things that Earl Spence had to give up to actually make the fight? Well, I think there was other smaller stuff that neither one of those people, Earl Spence or Espinosa, really brought up in this interview. You know, uh, they didn't really acknowledge the fact that maybe they gave up on a, a certain judge or... Maybe they did this type of drug testing or instead of that type of drug testing. They didn't really touch on that. They didn't really say whether Terrence Crawford got say-so and who picks the referees. They didn't, they didn't mention that fact. What he did mention, though, was that there was a rematch clause written into the contract for both fighters. Now, if y'all remember back, the original contract from last year that was you know, supposedly signed by both sides, but the fight still never happened. Anybody that knows me knows I love boxing. I was a promoter. I'll get in the ring with my fighters, brother, you know. <laughs> because remember, they said that Terrence Crawford, even Blue Blood said that Terrence Crawford had already signed his portion of the contract and come to find out that that wasn't real and that he was actually still waiting for another term to be met that was never met until now. So... You know, that rematch wasn't in the original contract for Terrence Crawford. It was in there for Earl Spence, but it wasn't in there for Terrence Crawford. So I'm sure that that was something else that Earl Spence had to concede to to actually make the fight. And there were some interesting things that were said about that rematch clause. Apparently, and this was coming from Steven Espinosa, apparently the rematch clause has to be activated within 30 days of July the 29th. July the 29th of 2023. They have 30 days, so they have up until August the 29th of 2023 to activate his rematch clause. He gets 30 days. Now, if he doesn't activate within that 30 days, whoever the loser is, the rematch is off. Now, something else interesting about the rematch clause is that both sides have discussed the fight potentially not taking place at 147, but perhaps taking place at 154. I don't know how that would work, being that the winner would be undisputed and have all those welterweight titles. It wouldn't be a title fight at, at that point, so would the fanfare still be there? For a rematch at 154, you know, that would be very, very interesting to see. Both fighters have acknowledged that. Both fighters have said that they're potentially moving up in weight. So anything could happen. Earl Spence said that in the interview. He doesn't know, you know, anything could happen. It might be a head bun, an injury, or something of that nature. So if there's that type of finish to the fight to where there was a quick decision that had to be made by the referee. Perhaps the fight will still happen at 147 and not 154. If there's a beatdown, perhaps the fight or the rematch happens at 
154 and not 147. A nasty car accident Errol Spence got into. I had Errol Spence beating him because he's too small. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think that Bud Crawford has grown into his own and he's a bigger body. I actually think he's the superior boxer. Errol Spence is bigger and stronger, but Bud can box. It's going to be very interesting to see how this fight plays out. I think that Earl Spence is a stand-up guy for giving up on anything within the contract to make the fight. And I think it's going to be very, very interesting to see whether the rematch actually happens at 147 or 154. I bet you do it too much! Y'all let me know down in the comment section below whether y'all think Steven Espinosa is right. Is he capping or is this factual? Did Earl Spence give up too much to make the fight or did he give up just enough to make the fight happen? And everything will be settled in the rematch that wasn't settled in the original. Hit that like button for me. Share, share, share. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Let me on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, but you're more than likely to get a response on the tube, so holler at me over there. If you want to collab, feature a product, or your channel on my channel, hit my Gmail. It is a flock of cards at gmail.com. And we are mine. I'm going to keep it funky with these niggas. I don't give a fuck about your mixtape. I'm going to keep it funky with these Bitches. I don't give a fuck if your kids hate I'ma keep it funky with these niggas I don't give a fuck if you got a plan I'ma keep it funky with these bitches I don't give a fuck if you got a man I'ma keep it funky with these niggas I don't give a fuck if you getting money I'ma keep it funky with these bitches I don't give a fuck if it was your cousin I'm still fucking Keep it funky Keep it funky Keep it funky I'ma keep it funky with these niggas I'ma keep it funky with these niggas I'ma keep it funky with these niggas I'ma keep it funky with these bitches I'ma keep it funky with these bitches I'ma keep it funky with these niggas You don't need to know if you gotta ask I'ma keep it funky with these bitches If I'm fucking with you then you gotta ask I'ma keep it funky with these niggas Don't come to the hood, you don't have a pass I'ma keep it funky with these bitches be careful, don't get robbed for that Prada bag I'ma keep it funky with these niggas Sometimes you gotta let a nigga know I'ma keep it funky with these bitches Every girl ain't a bitch, but every bitch is a hoe Ayo, hey, I'ma keep it funky with these niggas